Joey Franco here with us tonight. And My uh, mom calls me Joey. Most people call me Joe. Well, we have mutual friends, and they said, say hello to Joey for me. <laughs> they know me for a long time. Or they know my mom. Oh, right, okay. Came around for um, tea, and, tea and cookies, right, or something. I don't know. Um, so, yes, uh, we're at the Bonzo Bash, and you've taken the time out to graciously talk with us. Bonzo. I happen to be fortunate enough to be old, and when I was in high school in the mid-60s, um, there was a place called the Fillmore East, and that was like every weekend going to church. And we went there to worship Cream and Hendrix, and any time a guitar player in the Yardbirds put a band together, it was pretty important, okay? You know, Clapton did the Cream, and um, Jeff Beck did the Jeff Beck group with Rod Stewart and Ronnie Wood, and now all of a sudden, Jimmy Page has a new band. So it's like, hey, they're opening up at the Fillmore for Iron Butterfly. Iron Butterfly at the time, it was kind of played out. Okay, and the Gata De Vida, enough already, you know. We wanted to see the new English band, you know. And so we went down to see Led Zeppelin, first show in New York City, January 1969. And um, we were blown away. We were blown away, not only by John Bonham, but all four of them. But of right. course, being a drummer, it was like all about John Bonham. And um, yeah, I was lucky enough to see them in 73. Some of that footage um, was in the uh, song Remains the Same, you know. And, um, and then the last time I saw John Bonham was actually at a Carmine of Peace drum clinic in New Jersey. Yeah, he probably 72-ish, 73. Yeah, some, somewhere around there. Um, and, um, you know, I've got to say, I mean, not only myself, but probably every drummer, he's in their top five heroes, you know. Uh, he was one of the first real rock drummers, you know. He was um, influenced by a lot of the great R&B drummers, but he was playing in, I hate to say a metal band, but he was playing with a hard rock guitarist, hard rock blues kind of guitarist. At and um, what came out was John Bonham. And I remember the very first time I saw them, one of the songs they did was Communication Breakdown, and that's what I'll be playing tonight. Awesome. And that was your first choice? Yeah. You got it. Yeah, well, I know Brian. That was my only choice. I said, I'm playing Communication Breakdown. I didn't have a problem with that. <laughs> so he just got in contact with you and said, look, we're doing this thing. You'd obviously known about it for the last couple of years. This is the first I've known time of, you... about it because they were West Coast um, events. Right. Um, and... Um, one day Brian just called and said, hey, we're going to do a bunch of them on the East Coast. You, you in? I said, I'm in. And he goes... No well, hesitation. He said, give me three songs. I said, Communication Breakdown. And communication Breakdown. Communication Breakdown. Now, I mean, you uh, can choose yeah. a lot of songs. Oh, they're, 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 you can't get a bad one. <laughs> There's just something True. about that song that um, most rock and roll that's like... I, you are a bunch of wing nuts out there, right? I can talk BPMs, right? You know, most like 160, 170, 180 BPM rock and roll, Highway Star, Rebel Yell. Um, these songs were played like, um, doo -doo -bop -bop -bop, you know, like this kind of thing, you know, where the eighth notes were being carried by the right hand. But what Bonham did in Communication Breakdown is he carried the eighth notes with his right foot. So instead of just going like boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, he was going boom, boom, ba, boom, 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 ba, boom, 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 Yeah, that's heavy. The driving foot. That's, that's. Which I've learned coming here to New York is like, you know, I was very driving with my hands, you know, and I think that was, that's a, that's a jazz well, most, thing, most isn't Well, most fast it? eighth note thing, uh, Ramones, you know, the, the, it, was all, it was this stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, to hear the, the feet carry the eighth notes, I thought that was just so heavy, you know. And so it made an impression on me. I've used that groove uh, a bunch of times, and um, seeing them for the first time, that's the song that really stood out. So that's why... I want to play it tonight. Is your drum set up similar to... Nothing like it. <laughs> so how is that for you I, to play? Oh, it's weird. Um, I use... I guess if you had to 
model it after another drummer, my setup is more Cozy Powell, you know, two kick drums, two toms, two floor toms, you know, that's my setup. And when I set up one kick drum, I set it up as if there were two kick drums, you know. So to have one kick drum, like, in front of you, and um, it's a 26, I haven't played a 26 since the early 70s. Uh, Twisted but, Sister Days. But... It has the front head on. That's what really screws me up. Because I'm, used, no to, hole, right? I'm used to pushing air out of the drum, and now the, all the air is coming back. So yesterday I went to rehearsal and go, boo boo ba boo 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 and, and all the air is building. But the sound is awesome, you know. And, and yeah, you know, we're playing one song. I'll, I'll play whatever is there, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you're saying, is it comfortable? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. It's like a different instrument. <laughs> Like going acoustic piano to an electric piano yeah. or something, or not even that, like going uh, acoustic uh, piano to like a flute. Yeah, it was like playing the acoustic piano here to playing it in a different position and a different, you know, but you know, it, it whatever, I, you know. We were of playing. course you can still come from the heart as, oh, as the spirit of, of Bozo I, is. I, like, I just come to bash, you know, I just come to bash. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, <laughs> I'm in the cool. zone, we could we could just keep going like this. Oh, but we can go you forever, get, but I'm going to, you know, cut out and... Thank you for, um, you know, taking the time to say hey. Real quick, what's coming up for you, Joe, in the next, say, six months to a year? Doing a couple of records. Um, some of them are in progress. Some of them are kind of done, and they should be coming out. One's with a really crazy electric violinist named Mark Wood. One's with a really cool guitar player named Zach Solom. Um, other than that, I do a lot of television. Um, I do, um, believe it or not, a lot of music for children's television, which some I write, some I play drums on, some I just mix and produce, you know. Uh, I've been doing that for about 15 years now. We do a lot of things for Sesame Street and PBS, Nickelodeon, Playhouse Disney. Um, I've been doing that for a while, and that's pretty much my everyday world. And it keeps me home where I'm, you know, growing a couple of kids and um, I'm a happy guy happy guy and enjoying life yeah well thank you so much for joining us and we'll let you get in i can hear it's just started yep it's starting um it's happening so this is really exciting cool man great gig and we look forward to uh speaking to you soon all righty man